Hey guys, it says in Psalm 119, verse 84, how many are the days of your servant? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? What an interesting question. God, how many days do I have? You know, it says in Psalm 39, 4, Lord, make me to know my end. And what is the extent of my days? Let me know how transient I am. You know, it says in James that our lives are a vapor. You know, that you look at a tea kettle and it gets up to a boil and then there are these whips of wisps of vapor and they're just there and then gone. And God's trying to basically teach us uh, the brevity of life and not in a morbid way because actually God is eternal. He made us in his image. And remember, we are eternal beings. When He's the resurrection and the life. So even when we die, we live. And that's, that's the joy of Easter and the truth of the re resurrection. And since that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he gives life to your mortal body. And when uh, in the baptism verse in Romans 6, we've been buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as the Father raised Jesus from the dead, so we too might be raised up to walk in newness of life. So this isn't morbid. You know, how many are the days of your servant? This isn't morbid. It's a good question. Teach, it says in Proverbs, teach me to number my days that I may provide a heart of wisdom. I think when we have the end in mind, I think when we recognize that it's transient, that we are a vapor, we need to make the most out of our vapor. And uh, I had a friend, Reinhard Bonnke, and he said, life is a vapor, but what a marvelous vapor, right? Instead of the, 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 the conclusion of the French existentialist uh, life is empty, meaningless, and absurd. Or like what Solomon, when he backslid, said in Ecclesiastes, all is vanity and vanity. It's like striving after the wind. That's a morbid way to look at life. That is not what's being advocated here. This question is, you know, God, uh, how, many, how many are the days of your servant? And he's talking in a context where he's saying, when will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? So he's like, God... When is this problem going to be over? So there's another aspect of this verse right there. In addition to making the most of each day of our lives, um, man, in the midst of every challenge or conflict or trial, in this case, he's being persecuted, when are you going to deal with this, God? <laughs> I mean, how many more days do I have to put up with this? I don't know. I, it, it, the psalmist is trying to cope, you know, and, but yet, look, we remember, God, even when we die, we live, and even in our last breath, there's victory. I was with a, a young man that passed recently, and he was a champion in the faith. He was a quality Christian. He's a great husband and a great dad, and a beautiful, I repeat, beautiful member of our church. He was only a contributor, and I am grieved that he died when he did. His wife and his kids have been faithful in church. She's overcoming. They're overcoming. Beautiful people. He instilled something good in them. But to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. I watched him serve the Lord for years. I knew him as a single man. I knew him when he got married. I knew him as a father raising kids. And when he died, he was dignified. And he, I think, had a sense of courage, had a sense of hope, because he knew God had his whole life covered, including that moment of his life. So whatever situation you're facing right now, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to every temptation, test, and trial. But God's mercies never come to an end. In 
Luke chapter 4, when Jesus was being tempted, he's tempted in all points as we, yet he never sinned. Jesus, and you should read Luke chapter 4, the whole thing. It's the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. The devil bombarded him with temptation over and over again. It was relentless. It was ruthless. Persecution for sure. And then it says something very amazing. It says at the at the at the end of at the well, let me read it to you because I want to quote it accurately. Because his mer- God's mercies never come to an end, and whatever you're facing right now, and I'm sure you're facing something. God's there for you. Listen to what it says here. It says. In chapter 4, verse 13, when the devil had finished every temptation, he left him until an opportune time. When the devil had finished every temptation. So there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to the persecution, to the testing, to the challenges, to the trials. But God's mercies never come to an end. So the, the writer here says, how many are the days of your servant? Teach me to number my days. God, I pray... My days would be saturated with fruitfulness, with joy, uh, with your promises, with your word. Right before this, he says, um, even though my life is like, I've become like a wineskin in the smoke, I do not forget your statue. It's how long, how many are the days of your servant? Well, Psalm 91, the last verse says, with long life, he satisfies you and shows you his salvation. So whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, I'm so glad you tuned in as I stand with you for strength, for encouragement, for enrichment, that God gives you supernatural help in whatever you're facing. God bless you.